when we're creating our own method um, modality, maybe our own school or course, how much can we copy from our teachers? How much can we copy from those we learn from maybe our therapists, our coaches, our mentors, our healers? And that's a very good question. And I first want to invite you to comment below, actually, because I don't necessarily think I have the right answer. I have kind of an extreme answer, um, which I'll share. But you can comment below what what do you think is appropriate? And I think it's going to probably be, the, I think the right answer is going to be different for every industry and every relationship you have. So for example, my extreme answer when it comes to me as the teacher is that I have consciously and purposefully uncopyrighted everything I do. Not only my free content, of course, my blog posts, my videos, anything you hear from my blog posts and videos, any ideas, you can literally even copy paste my entire book and publish my entire book and call it yours. Not even mention my name once, which some people have done actually. And I don't care because I want the ideas out there. I'm very like liberated in terms of my, I don't think ideas are, are possessive. I don't think humans should be possessive of ideas. Um, like I said, this is an extreme view because most of the world is copyright this, you know, patent this, protect that. Um, I, I think physical items should be protected because I can't just give it with my phone. I don't have a phone anymore or my furniture, right? But ideas are like, ideas are, are ephemeral. You know, they, they can be created like this if you, if you believe it, which I do. And I do, I do create ideas just like this and this. And I'm sure I probably copy people without realizing I copied them because I have such a liberated view, view about it. And yet, at the same time, I've never gotten anyone. I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure. I mean, whenever I remember someone, I'll try to credit them. But I'm sure I've said things that I heard. And because of my liberated mindset, I just forget to credit people. I've never had anyone come back to me and say, George, I said that before you. You should credit me. I'm, in 13 years, I've never had that happen. So it, 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 is there some kind of law of attraction thing going on here? Maybe, right? Maybe there is some kind of vibrational or sociological uh, dynamic such that because I'm so liberated about my own stuff, and by, I, I, let me complete my, my sentence here, not only my free stuff, my paid courses are also uncopyrighted. Please don't tell everybody I said this, right? Because everyone's going to, one person going to buy and then share my courses with all their friends for free. I don't, I'm not going to come after you. I don't care if you do that. I don't. I don't want to know. Actually, if you do, if you if you're going to cheat on me, don't tell me. You know, kind of thing. Like I'd rather not know, right? Um, but it, the 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 technicality is, I don't care. I don't care. Um, you can take my paid courses and call it your own the entire thing. All my ideas exactly in the same word word order. I don't care. Please don't tell me if you if you do that or not do that. Um, but I still I'm going to have a great business no matter if people do that. Um, and of course, every time I tell people this, people are, oh, uh, for sure, I'm going to credit you. See, that's the law of attraction, right? What, when I say this stuff, people are like extra protective of me. That's the irony of it. It's like people are extra protective of me. Now, let me go back to you as the person who is going to create a method borrowing from your teachers and coaches. Your teachers, coaches, and mentors are probably not as liberated in their <laughs> view of idea protection as me, right? And so therefore, they're probably going to feel competitive. They're probably, going to, especially someone you have a relationship with, right? Your therapist, your coach, your healer, your mentor, your, your, your direct teacher, like if they actually work with you personally, and then they see you create a school or a method and you're teaching things that sound like them, the relationship is going to be strained because they don't have this kind of liberated mind. So what can we do? Because it's, you can't help. Of, how can, how can you not naturally come through with some of the stuff they said, even if you tried not to, uh, in fact, the harder you try, probably the, the more it's going to accidentally come through in some way. Okay. There are a couple of solutions to this. One solution is if, if it feels appropriate to ask them, if you think they're going to give you a good answer, ideally you ask them, say, can I, can I teach? I'm, I'm creating a new framework, but I'm going to be borrowing from yours. Is it okay? I'm going to credit you. Now, question is not whether you, this is several layers of question here. Does it make sense to credit them? 
did they really come up with it or did they get it from Jesus or Buddha or somebody else? Did they get it? Like a lot of people claim claim stuff as their own, which they shouldn't. And they go, oh, you can, they feel competitive. Like, what are you talking about? You got it from somebody else. You probably don't even realize you got it from somebody else. Right now you're claiming credit for this. And that's why I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. Everything comes from source anyway, ultimately. Even Jesus, right? Buddha, that came from source, right? Like, they never, I don't think that Jesus would go, I'm going to sue you. Right? Jesus and Buddha today, are they going to sue someone or write a cease and desist letter? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine any spiritual teacher, true, true, you know, from the past, especially, you know, if they had cease and desist, even in modern, would they write a cease and desist letter? Are you kidding me? They would say, please, my child, you know, my student, please go on and call it your own. I don't care if you call it. So anyway, but still, egos today, human teachers, they're going to feel competitive because they don't think it's enough. So we can either ask them and hope they say, you're welcome to. If you credit me, then I'm okay with that. Or some of them might even say, you can license some of my work. You can pay me some monthly fee to use these ideas, which then should push you to the next alternative. For you to create your own idea that is distinctive enough from them as to not that it's not recognizable because we all borrow from our roots we all have a lineage of course and you can credit your lineage more generally in your about page right in your bio you could say i'm from the lineage of so and so and so and so great but you don't have to every every breath every single time you say a sentence oh then that came from so and so that's that's onerous I don't think it's necessary, um, but ideally you would create ideas that are separate enough. Name them, especially the, the the terminology and the phrases. That's really usually where people write cease and desist letters to people. They're using the same terminology, the same brand, the same words. You know, if I came up with, you know, it, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't think of it, but, but let's say I, I can't think of one, but I'm sure there are phrases that people have branded and they call it. So, how do you come up with something that's really distinct? Well, you either journal, sleep on it, you know, work with a friend, work with a coach to try to come, <laughs> not borrowing from their ideas. But or these days, you can use AI chatbots. I know not everyone loves this, but it's true. You can use AI chatbots like ChatGPT is in, like unlimited creativity right there for you. Whether you use Poe.com or ChatGPT or Bing Chat. There's so many chatbots these days that they have unlimited creativity. They have unlimited words for you. They have unlimited ways to combine words that have never been seen before. They can do that because they have all the database of everything that's been seen before, right? On the internet. So you could say, hey, listen, I want to create this modality. Let me describe it for you. Now, with the, you have to learn how to use a chatbot. Some chatbots cannot, you cannot type so much. Some chatbots you can type a lot, but you have to, you know. Work with it. You have to learn to work. I have a course on how to, anyway, uh, how to work with these chatbots. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You you work with these chatbots today. Let me explain this concept to you. Okay. Can you reword this concept in a completely unique and unusual way that has ne never been seen on the internet before? And then you see what it gives you. And then you work with it through a conversational format. You just keep saying, well, what about this? What about that? You know, and then finally, after it gives you something, like some reworded concept or reframed, just say, help me rethink this. Help me rethink this so that's distinct from this other modality, right? It'll help you. And you'll be surprised, like, wow, this is actually pretty damn good. And then you should you should Google it. <laughs> after you come up with the final result, you should still um, Google the name, at least the name or the phrase that you're going to name this thing or the key the keywords or terms that you're going to use. Still Google it to make sure that it's not being copyrighted by somebody else. Now, just because other people are using it doesn't mean that you can't use it. But certainly if it's copyrighted or someone's using it as their brand, you know, you should probably tiptoe with, with uh, be, be careful around that. So I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing what your comments are below. And just one more thing, it's not just about rephrasing or using a different word from, from your teacher. It's also you being reasonably critical or not just being a, um, I like to say contrarian, but basically no teacher has the perfect method. No matter how much you revere and respect your teacher, they're only human and they're an imperfect channel of source. And by the way, source is unlimited abundance frameworks and 
you know, unlimited ways, correct ways of thinking about it, right? Um, so this teacher who gave you the seven step, it seems so perfect, but it's not. You can poke holes in it. In fact, like I said, you can either work on this with a friend, uh, uh, you know, some some critical friend or or with a chat bot to say, can you poke holes in the logic of this seven step method? Come up with what you think are the gaps in logic. What what could be added that would make it better? Like what could that, you know, and, and the chat bot or your, your, your human bot friend uh, will come up with, oh, you know what? Between steps two and three, it really should be step two and a half. Like people don't, it's too, too high of a step, right? Or people, someone, you're, you know, you might come up with maybe step seven, it really should be step three. Like we should reorder these steps and you're going to be a contrarian, be a critic to say, if I were criticizing this, what's not perfect about it? I know I revere the person so much, but let me now take on the role of someone who's going to poke holes in this in this argument or, or in, in this framework, because there are always holes that, that can be poked. There's always ways that can be reformulated to be completely new because source abundance, there's unlimited ways. So I hope this is helpful.